Hi, this is Anwar Saeed, a GI oncologist at the University of Pittsburgh. And we're excited to be here today presenting um, encouraging uh, early data uh, from uh, the Twin Peak uh, trial that's testing uh, Scrivatomic, which is a first-in-class bispecific T-cell antibody that have been designed to mitigate the class effect of targeting CD47, um, which is anemia and uh, thrombocytopenia and uh, the GI toxicities, uh, namely nausea and vomiting of uh, COD-18.2 um, uh, antibodies. This uh, novel molecule um, in, in the study uh, was, combined, was tested in uh, multiple cohorts of uh, GI malignancies, uh, including pancreatic cancer patients who are chemotherapy naive in the frontline uh, setting. Uh, it was tested as either monotherapy or in combination uh, with chemotherapy gemabraxane or in combination with immunotherapy in multiple tumor types. We have seen uh, in this uh, trial an encouraging uh, safety data given the design uh, of the bispecific technology um, with um, very tolerable uh, 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 addition of spivatomic to uh, gemabraxane in the pancreatic uh, frontline population with no additive uh, GI toxicities and no additive cytopenias uh, on top of what is uh, expected to be seen with uh, standard of care dosing of gemabraxane uh, in the setting. Um, the population that went on the study had uh, a cloud in 18.2 expression of at least 10%. Um, and we have seen uh, with, with a moderate to, uh, to, uh, to high intensity. Uh, we have seen uh, efficacy across the spectrum of cloud 18 expression uh, beyond the safety and encouraging data. I think the efficacy of the uh, follow-up uh, mark of around 11 months uh, showed an overall response rate of 40% with a confirmed partial response of 33% and a disease control rate of 93% and um, a median progression-free survival of 7.3 months and uh, median overall survival is still maturing, uh, not reached yet and uh, a six-month overall survival of 93%. Uh, with those encouraging safety data, we're looking at more mature data from the other cohorts. This uh, efficacy data belong to the cohort of uh, patients that received this pivotomeg at the dose of two milligram per kilogram. We have an ongoing cohort uh, with uh, a higher dose of pivotomeg at three milligram per kg that's still ongoing. And we look forward to presenting more mature data from this cohort as well as um, the ongoing three meg per kg cohort in a, in a future meeting. Um, uh, beyond that, I would like to highlight uh, that we have uh, analysis showing that the efficacy that we've seen as far as responses and durable responses was seen across the spectrum of KRAS mutations and across the spectrum of uh, cloud 18.2 expression including responses seen at as low as cloud 18 expression of 10%. So with that in, in the background, I would like to, um, um, you know, um, discuss with my colleague, uh, who's a, a key opinion leader in this space and um, love his opinion on how do you uh, look at this data when contrasting the early uh, signal we're seeing here with what we know uh, for a standard of care gemabraxin for thoronauts and frontline setting in pancreas. Yeah, thanks, Anwar. I'm Zev Weinberg from UCLA. Happy to discuss it. Um, you know, I think, first of all, this is the time of bispecifics. These drugs are becoming very popular and, and for good reason. And they were able to attract, as you mentioned, a very low cut point in the expression. So to the point where the expression of the target matters very little. And as we move forward, we're seeing, and this study is a good example of how we're able to attract virtually every patient with pancreas and GI cancers, which is important. Um, secondarily, I think, as you put it, you know, one of the challenges of the CD47 has always been the Cytopenia. cytopenias, in particular, the anemia and some of the issues there. And here we don't see it. So, so it's quite encouraging. In terms of Claudin 18.2 specifically, I think you, you made a good point in that, um, you know, we're able to spare some of the critical toxicities that we're used to seeing with other Claudin 18.2 targeted agents, those of nausea, those of vomiting. And even when combined with chemotherapy, you're able to get at therapeutic dose levels of this guy-specific antibody. So it's a preliminary data set, um, but I think it looks quite interesting and provocative. And obviously, as it matures, I would expect that the median PFS and the median uh, duration of response will mature as well. So 
good start and uh, congratulations on enrolling these patients. Thank you, Zell. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, that brings another, uh, uh, another question on the, the, the asset that we have, the molecule, uh, with the bispecific technology. Uh, how do you think about targeting CD47 and its relevance to pancreatic cancer? I know, you know, there has been an, a number of studies that was done in pancreatic cancer as opposed to, you know, and similar and in, in, in parallel to multiple other GI solid tumors that showed when we use the classic PD-1 targeted agents in pancreatic cancer, whether, you know, definitely not monotherapy, but in combination with chemotherapy, those studies have been largely negative. Do you see um, targeting CD-47 and bringing the innate immunity uh, you know, making sense in this yeah. case? Yeah, I mean, so the hope here is, so first of all, CD-47 targeting by itself you know that it has to be paired with something else. And, and by engaging innate immunity, you know that has to be paired with another blocker. And here, Claudin 18.2 is a good example of another blocking antibody. So the affinity of, for the antibody of Claudin 18.2 is very high. The affinity of it for CD47 is very high. So it's kind of what you want to see in a bispecific. I think, you know, bispecifics come in a few different flavors. You either bind two different tumor-associated antigens or you bind, in this case, one tumor-associated antigen and a antigen that is hopefully engaging innate immunity, as you put it. So I think um, the preclinical data supports that, and the early clinical results so far are, are encouraging. Um, you have to do a number more patients with chemo, so you get a feel for, you know, these kind of things, but that, that process is ongoing. And in terms of uh, targeting the population and which lines of therapy, do you think um, that where are we heading here in terms of fusing the molecule in frontline setting with demobraxane is the right setting, or you think another setting in pancreatic cancer is more unmet need, or where where would you position a vice specific T cell engager? So I think you know doing it in refractory patients makes sense as a single agent because really here you're talking about a target population in combination with chemotherapy. It obviously takes more time. You have to the the uh, the events are longer and. But I think ultimately, you know, if you feel like you have a really good targeted therapy here, uh, you know, you have to look at it in front line. So I, I don't, I don't, I consider both sort of equally important. Right. And uh, in terms of future perspective, um, um, taking this, do you think we're prime time now to take this to phase three, taking it to phase three in, in front line, um, future perspectives in terms of unmet need in the field and other hot areas uh, where, where other noble agents are being investigated in pancreatic cancer and venues for combinations? So I think in gastric cancer, we already have pretty good data that uh, clon 18 is a targetable, yep. obviously, a protein. And, and beyond just antibody, it's approved. Zolbituximab, there's a whole host of antibody drug conjugates there and by specific. So I think certainly gastric cancer and pancreatic cancer, the expression levels are very, very similar. So, uh, you know, as you know, sulbituximab did not meet its endpoint in pancreatic cancer. That does not mean that we should give up on Claudin 18.2 as a target. So I, so I applaud you for doing this work, looking specifically at pancreatic cancer. I think all GI malignancies need additional targeted and bispecific antibodies. So congratulations on this okay. great work. Thank you, Zal. Thank you very much. Thank you. So next, I would like to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Teresa Macarula, who is a GI oncologist focused on hepatobiliary um, uh, malignancies and uh, who is at uh, 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 Baldebran Institute in Spain, uh, who will join us in this discussion today. Thank you, Teresa, for, for joining us uh, today and uh, discussing the results of this bivatmic and uh, uh, for the results of the Twin Peak trial. Um, so in pancreatic cancer, hearing the efficacy results, the early encouraging data that we discussed um, um, today, uh, where do you think, you know, outside the U.S., um, pancreatic cancer therapeutic practice, uh, where do you see this fit as a molecule uh, in terms of line of therapy, how it would fit well in the combining it with gemabraxin in terms of preference for, you know, for example, chemo regimens and frontline? Um, do, you see do you see the, the regimen uh, fitting well in your practice? Yeah, first of all, thank you for the question. So I think, first of all, there is a very good uh, uh, news for pancreatic cancer community because, as you know, this is a really high and many need, the treatment options for pancreatic cancer. So to see these encouraging results with this combination of this PF-specific antibody plus gemapakitaxel, I think is a really uh, encouraging uh, um, uh, situation. Uh, in, in Europe, in general, we use gemapakitaxel, and depending on the countries, we use, we use less and more or more. For example, in Spain, in my country, 
we use gemnopakitaxel in 60% of our patients. So I think to see a combination of gemnopakitaxel with this new molecule, uh, it's a very good uh, uh, receipt for our community because we use a lot this this strategy. No, this is great. Um, building on that, in terms of the molecule itself, um, how you think uh, from a GI uh, oncologist perspective, how much is important to add more targets when thinking about pancreatic cancer as opposed to other disease types? Uh, uh, it's a disease that inherently uh, in resistant to immunotherapy in general, this is kind of a more noble target and then um, want to kind of focus on that CD47 and uh, in engaging the NH immunity here. How important is that um, when talking about pancreatic cancer? So, you know, pancreatic cancer uh, uh, immunotherapy is not working. Also, we cannot, dem we didn't demonstrate in the past that immunotherapy can help to chemo to be more effective. So, probably this new mechanism of action, uh, this B specific antibody uh, put into together targeting the Kyolin 18.2, that is an important target in pancreatic cancer. With this C report, is said, uh, target, probably this can help to change the monoclonal environment of pancreatic cancer. So I think the mechanism of action is very important. And in fact, when you see the data here, probably this is translate in clinical outcomes. So, and also in these late responses that we had, that is this uh, activity that we can have with immunotherapy. So we can see the effect there. Yeah, and I, um, I, I totally agree with you. And building up on that, I, I also see a venue uh, looking at the safety uh, data that we're getting with combining this with gemabraxane is that, you know, um, it's, it gives a, kind of a venue for additional immune modulators that could be added uh, down the road uh, while maybe uh, de-escalating the chemo. Um, so, for example, uh, since we're engaging the NH system, we could um, also involve adaptive immunity and add a PD-1 inhibitor uh, to, uh, to the combination and see if that will add more synergy. Uh, this one kind of uh, venue, but the other thing is with all the KRAS inhibitors being investigated now, in pancreatic cancer, I look at Keras G12D and all Keras inhibitors. And do, do you see um, in the future, future trajectory for developing those molecules, a venue where those molecules could could partner and so we could shy away from chemo in, in, in this setting? Yeah, first of all, the CRQ profile is really good in this, in this combination. And this is the first step in order to think maybe in the future, uh, to think in different combinations. Now, today, what we have to do is to keep mature data of this combination to establish this you know, potential th new therapy uh, for pancreatic cancer. But why not? Then, in the future, maybe we can combine with all these strategies that you mentioned for sure for the immunotherapy. Um, uh, from the site to profile uh, perspective, uh, this it seems that it can be possible. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, every time we are thinking more in chemo-free regimens, why not? So maybe in the future we can add something to this specific antibody without chemo, why not? Let's see a future. What, what, what like? Yeah, totally in agreement. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to have more mature data at, uh, presented down the road in future conferences and uh, looking forward for all the uh, great trajectory we have here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.